I think my first dance class ever was when I was four. I think probably like four. Um, they um, found a ballet class for me. Yeah, I started when I was two and a half, three years old. Nine or ten? I just started dancing when I was uh, six, I think. I mean, started like um, taking classes. I mean, I was, I've been dancing since forever. At the time, I was very Taekwondo focused, and so you know, I wanted to be a ninja. And so, <laughs> while I liked musical theater and dancing, it was also at around that time when I was like, oh, if I want to be seen as a guy, I probably shouldn't be dancing. I should, you know, be kicking people. Right. I don't know. Dancing itself is kind of being more conscious about it because here's a gigantic wall of mirrors, plus you're wearing incredibly tight clothes. Not for me in general, across the board, like in dance, like body stuff, like feeling comfortable in the clothes that you're wearing is just impossible. <laughs> you, know? Or, you know, you don't have a dancer's body, or you don't mm. have a this and that. And, it's... and I also don't have like your typical, like, or your like very stereotypical, like what they're looking for in ballet companies or what they're looking for in the gram company body. Yeah, like I've never, I was never the like stereotypical dancer in appearance, I think. Well, it, uh, the height stuff is definitely an issue. And I'm black. <laughs> I'm just not tall enough. I feel like, you know, sometimes when I look at my body, you know, we all have our issues, but my thing sometimes is that I'm not as, you know, narrow as I'd like to be. And so I was being graded in ballet class on like the likelihood that I would be a professional ballet dancer. This is why people develop eating disorders. At the time I had a really intense eating disorder actually. Just tea and honey was my diet. I'm very sensitive to weight. Stay skinny, stay skinny, stay skinny. And then through, I mean honestly I loved the ballet, but the ballet was very, we had weigh-ins every day. My my filter through my body dysmorphia has more has more been about I'm too fat. You know, changing in the locker rooms it was never a question of not wanting to take off my shirt because I was worried about people looking at me like oh he's trans or he doesn't look like a guy. It had more to do with not liking my body image because like maybe that day I felt fat or you know not liking the way that looks. Um, yeah, that still makes me feel bad. You know, of course I'm like. I'm, uh, you know, like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to get skinnier. <laughs> Sometimes in class, if, you know, I look at myself and I'll see certain parts of me, because, you know, when I'm tight, I look at my legs and like, oh, they're not as skinny as those other guys, because that, you know, if I gain weight, it's usually in my legs, so just like thighs, block handles, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes I'll be looking at my legs and I'm like, God, I hope no one noticed that I have women legs. what you wear and how comfortable you are and it really affects how you move. It was just like a tighter shirt with girl sleeves and even that I was like, oh this is so uncomfortable, this is awful. Leotards were very uncomfortable because you, you couldn't hide anything, you know, and, and as a trans masculine person that's like you obsess over your image in a different way but you can hide and accessorize and whatever to kind of fool the eye but there's no hiding in the leotard. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the <laughs> roughest part was the like, um, spandex unitards. Right. Not my, not my bag. If you feel comfortable in that leotard, you, there's something wrong. <laughs> so I, I think I just associated costume time with like a certain flavor of dread. <laughs> there's a boy dress code and a girl dress code. Oh, yeah. And the girls wore spaghetti strap tops and the boys wore polos. And I went to try on the spaghetti strap top and I was like, there's no way, I'm, I'm not doing this at all. No way, uh-uh. It's like, it's really hard to Costume transgender dancers. Like, that yeah. was a conversation that needed to be happened, but couldn't have happened it, had I said, no, I can't be in this project. Yeah. Once I started dancing at the Gram school, I had tons of Gram. I have like permanent injuries from Gram. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, everything that comes with Gram. Over the top. Dark yeah. and dramatic, and yeah. yeah. I kind of like ate that up. Yeah. The language is all like. Like death and birth and twist and contract and look over the precipice. Allow me to be like, what is the pelvic floor? You know, oh, yeah, that well, men have pelvic floors. Lots of like bleeding vagina into the earth imagery. I, cause, I mean, you know, I trained at the Graham School and like, 
the company is not a reflection of me. Do, or do you pack it in, in life? Or is it just I, not really? Sometimes that's, sometimes I, that's a personal question. Well, yeah, yeah I'm asking you, <laughs> I'm going to be asking you a personal question. You don't have to answer though. <laughs> I mean, uh. But this was going to, it's going to lead into the next question. Though. Yeah. But you can, you, we can also not. No, it's okay. It. I'm just going to let myself feel what I feel. We're exploring embarrassment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, in classroom, like in the studio, dance training, not so much. No, I no. think that would just get in the way. But it was never a question to not pack, right? I mean, you were, it was just like, you, you pack all the time. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So, which I don't know, some, most of the time, honestly, I don't pack. But when sometimes there would be days that I was like, fuck it, I want to pack today and I am going to dance class. So, and those days were nerve wracking. I'm not going to lie. Those days were fucking nerve wracking because those are the days I got looked at the most in that, what the fuck are you doing? You right. Know? I used to bind um, every day. Classes, no classes. No. I do... I mostly find on my everyday basis. I've been binding for so many years now, how that's actually deteriorating my dance career. Um, binding, like, it, it was not uh, sustainable. A lot of people have found a way to just not bind. Mm -hmm. I somehow haven't felt comfortable doing that. So I think I continue to injure myself over and over, and I, I don't... I don't have the answer yet on how to like have a sustainable dance career while binding. It, was, it hurt too much. I couldn't. I couldn't breathe. I was, um, you know, like headaches, tension. Uh, my neck often like slips out of, like I have a vertebrae that slips out of place that I'm sure is in like direct relation to all the years of doing that. Um, I started to get like tingling and numbness down my arms and wow. the sides of my hands. It's definitely, I feel it most in part of dance. Now, as you know, the ballet is and was so, so binary. Right. And as confused as I was, I was just, I don't know, I just didn't feel like I had a place. Right. Yeah. It, it, I've never had to, I guess, be the man, you know, because in when I was like, younger, I was, you know, I identified then as a girl. You know, there are even different boy moves and girl moves. Well, exactly. And, I think, and, like, and so to be on point felt like, mm. <laughs> like, this is for girls. <laughs> um, it's all about the girl making her look pretty. Mm -hmm. um, guys are just kind of there to lift and to support her, I right. guess. I think I would have loved taking ballet as a boy. You think so? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just wanted to jump and You're right, jumps. Mm -hmm. lift. And... and so the fact that no one knows that I'm trans but still expects me to do the high jumps and the, you know, the, the endurance part of it, and then I do it, kind of just, it makes me feel like, hey, I have a big secret and no one knows, ha, 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 but I'm doing it, you didn't think I could do it. And I was always jealous of, like, the different way they got to move, like the jumps and I always wanted to, even though I was so tiny, you know, lift people, and I was very, and still am, I think, <laughs> jealous of the difference of uh, movement. It just seemed like a, a girl rite of passage in this new thing that I've become obsessed with, and part of me was really kind of jealous about it, because, you know, little girls, they all, they kind of just, it just seems so natural that these little girls are taking this class, and then eventually they'll be on point, and it's just, that's just how you do it. And I guess I looked at it kind of like, that's just so easy. You don't think about, you never wanted to be a little boy. So it's, it's just, I kind of was jealous of the fact that their childhood is just, you know, as society wants it to be. Maybe it's because it's cool now or regardless, but I do feel like the more we push, the more mm. open people or just the more educated people will become, you know? Yeah. I want I want a space for myself to feel comfortable, and then th th thus I can relax enough to feel comfortable with the other moving bodies in the space. Now I shape those roles for myself in my own work.
work, you know. And like this person is watching my dance, and when somebody watches dance, I want them to, when I dance, I want them to see me dance, not be like, oh, this is Felix, and this is the whole backstory of Felix. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like, you know, the audience of people who are interested in tokenizing us, they have to go through a process of being like, it's so cool that you're trans, we're casting you because you're trans, about you being trans, blah, blah, yeah. blah, before they can just be like, oh, you're an interesting dancer, mm -hmm. and you're an interesting body on stage. I think that what's important to me is to get to a place of body acceptance. I'm like, I actually don't care. I don't care about making my work trans. I don't care about making my work even queer. That's not where my artistic creativity births from. So I'm trying to actually let go of that and just allow my body to be what it is. Because I think that it also took me, it got me to a place with my body that like I needed to be or I need to be in, which is like realizing or like loving my body for what it is and then like also like coming to terms with like m my body and then my gender and how they align or like disalign or whatever you know but like just coming to terms with that and, and really what it comes down to is about a self-hatred thing is that we're to we've taught ourselves to be self-hating it's something that i don't want to perpetuate like always self-hating always <sighs> just having that struggle okay. because for too long i've been listening to what other people have had to say about my body and i've taken that in and it's turned into hatred mm -hmm. and it's turned into anger and it's turned into all these other things so i don't want that to happen anymore i want to take control of myself so i read suzanne farrell's um holding on to the air ah. and the way she describes how she feels about dance is very relatable to me. She was never like, I was born to dance, but it was like when it became that point where watching people dance wasn't good enough, like she had to do it too. Like she couldn't just watch it and be content, you know? Mm -hmm. Just other ways that she describes how she felt about it, I was like, oh yeah, that's how I feel too. I don't, I don't think that there's any accident that I am a dancer. My in life, this lifetime, is um, is about being able to be a body. So I, you know, I became a professional dancer as a different gender, and then okay. I, I'm not going to stop dancing because I'm trans now. Mm -hmm. I can't stop dancing. I could, I could never give it up.